so just a very brief reminder um we did the thumbnail sketch last week the week so this is all little thumbnail sketch that we did um and we kind of our values so um our values just for gisella's um point of view i'm just gonna mute my mom sorry mom gotta mute you <laughs> so gisella my mom's um here from she's my mom and my godmother barbara barbara give gisella a wave <laughs> are actually in england so they are oh. uh, we managed to find um a time that works internationally so we have two students from england which is three o'clock in england 10 o'clock our time as my dad hi dad <laughs> so so this is our thumbnail sketch that i did um with you last the last time um, and really, we're just focusing on um, where our values are. So whereas zero would be completely white and nine would be our darkest color, um, we kind of worked on the painting and kind of reverse engineered it as, as where our lights and shadows would be. So we do this whenever we're planning a painting, either from a photograph or if we're out in the field, um, it's good to do a very quick thumbnail sketch. I always say don't spend more than about two minutes on a thumbnail sketch because it doesn't have to be. Well, we're really just establishing where the lines are, where our focal point's going to be, um, where our darks and lights are going to be, and just the basic shape. So, so that was our, our little thumbnail sketch that we did. Um, and we are going to be painting... Um, kind of in a fairly traditional way today, whereas we are working in layers in acrylic from background to foreground. So we're just going to do in layers. I know we say you're seven layers away from a masterpiece. So, um, so you know, this is, we always start with layer one and we don't start panicking until we're at layer six. So we'll go from there. Um, next week, we're doing a two week long painting following the style of the group of seven. So we are gonna be doing a very different way of painting. So instead of layering like this and not concentrating on the detail and where our main lines are gonna to go to later, next week, we're gonna be painting on a neutral background. So we're gonna be painting our canvases red. So everybody needs to prepare their canvases red for next week only. Um, we are gonna be sketching out the design on the red canvas using black thin paint. Um, and then we're gonna be establishing our lights and darks first, and then we're gonna be adding the color. So it's a very different style of painting next week, but this week we're gonna do traditional style, which I tend to paint um, my realism paintings the way that we're painting today. And I do my kind of group of seven style, more semi-abstract stuff, the style we're doing next week. Um, I do find that it's definitely a preference based on style. So you'll find you'll either want to paint this way that we're painting this week, or you'll want to paint the way we paint next week. So that so I'm hoping that teaching you two very contrasting styles will help you decide on how you enjoy painting and how you want your future of painting to be put together. So I'm going to switch cameras. Um, really? Julie, quick question. What color red would you like us to prepare the canvas? For Is next someone... week? Um, I would say go with a warm red, so like an admin red. What? Uh, a what you red. A warm red. Yeah, yeah. So a warm red. But you'll find that I have put all of the stages in the notes. So you'll have step-by-step -step instructions in the notes that I sent yesterday. Um, it doesn't really matter. You know, I tend to just use whatever red I've got a lot of. Um, and uh, sometimes I'll just mix in a bit of brown as well. Just it's it's more just establishing a neutral mid value background. Um, so it, it doesn't really matter because we're going to cover it up anyway. And the reason why we paint on a red background for next week um, is because when we are painting on a stark white canvas, it does dictate where we go with regards to colors. 
And I find when we're on a neutral background, we're already in the middle. So it's easy to go very bright um, and very dark or go straight to, to the lighter color. So it's kind of nice to be on a, on a neutral background, but it's a different style of painting. If I, if I want my paintings to be really exaggerated over the top color, then I'll go on a red background. If I want them to be more kind of uh, natural colors, um, then I'll, I'll, I'll work in layers the way that we're going to be doing today. So with regards to colors, um, we're going to be concentrating on our three primary colors. Um, so I'm going to be using um, cobalt blue. Um, if you have ultramarine, feel free to use Julie, ultramarine. Can you please mute everybody? Yep. Okay. I, I, you're cutting out the noise in the background. Okay. So we're going to be using cobalt blue, um, cadmium yellow, um, and we're going to be using cadmium red, and our titanium white, and a little bit of black today. So just our three main primary colors. If you have ultramarine instead of cobalt blue, that's completely fine. Um, go with what you have. It doesn't really make a lot of difference because all our painting is going to be individual to us anyway. Okay, so um, to get started, we're going to paint our canvas just with water and that helps our paint spread more easily. I do recommend having two water containers and lots of paper towel handy. Um, Gisela, are you observing today or are you painting with us? I think I'm going to be painting today. Excellent. Oh, I'm so excited. That's going to be great. Okay, I'm going to switch cameras now. Okay, and uh, I'm moving over to my bigger screen so I can see everybody clearly. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to put the um, original painting next to this. It probably won't fit completely within the shot, but you'll get to see most of it. So can everybody see that okay? How is my lighting? Do I need to go a bit lighter? I'll go a little tiny bit lighter. Okay, so um, I'm gonna start with having this next to me. Um, once we get into detail, I'm gonna zoom in on this canvas um, just so you can see the detail. But for now, just so you can kind of remind yourselves of what we're painting, we're gonna um, be starting on this. So we're gonna start with our cobalt blue. So I've got a very big jar of my cobalt blue. I'm going to get that out. I'm going to pre paint my canvas with water to start with. Um, so this just helps the paint flow more easily. I do have my little five-year-old next to me. He is fully occupied on his laptop right now, but just in case he needs me, I may have to pause for a brief minute. He's being a very good boy right now. Minecraft. And he's playing Minecraft educational. So okay, so this just helps the paint flow a little bit more easily. Okay, so the two colors we're going to start with is cobalt blue and white and we are going to mix on the canvas so after you've dampened your canvas um, we're going to get cobalt blue and white so i like to just pour the paint straight onto the canvas so i'm going to put a little kind of maybe about a um 25 cent amount of white to start with i can always add a bit more Um, so can everybody remember what it's called when we have our, our white and then we add our one color to it? Is it tin tone or shade? Tint. Tint, absolutely, it's tint. Okay, so we're gonna tint the white with our blue. Uh, and do we continue with the, um, the larger flat? Yeah, continue with the large flat. Okay. 
just gonna get a little bit more blue. My blue is completely solidified, so I'm just gonna get some more blue out. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm actually gonna use a little bit of ultramarine and cobalt blue today. Are we doing the whole square or just the middle bit? We're going to paint the whole thing. So okay. I'm going to use a little bit of a combo of ultramarine and cobalt just to get a bit of a neutral. OK, so we want it to be fairly pale. So I think I'm going to add a bit more white to that. So on a value scale, you're looking at about a three. So for now, I'm just doing lots of X's. Probably we're nearly at the end of July. I'll believe it. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> See, English people don't have this as, as much as Canadians, but we have so much snow and such a long winter. We're so desperate for summer. Move this. I don't want to get paint on my original. Don't forget to paint your edges while you're at it. And if it's a bit streaky like this, I'm kind of letting it, I'm allowing this on purpose because I kind of like it. it, looks a little bit more interesting. So I'm deliberately not blending it too much. I'm doing my edges now. I know my mom was very excited about painting this one today, weren't you? <laughs> Oh, she's dropped off of Luster again. Okay. 
So the reason why I do crisscrosses on the first layer is canvases have this weave that sometimes it's hard to fill all the, the little spaces in the weave. So if you go back and forth in little axes, it kind of really helps get the paint right into the weave. And our, our first layer is always the trickiest. That's why we often will prep the canvas with a base layer before we start painting. Next time we are, we'll be doing some paintings on a black canvas. This will be fun. How is that going for everybody? Does anybody mind if I just get this? It's quite an important call if you don't mind just while we're painting our background. No, I can see it in the back.
Hi guys, I'm so sorry. I'm just on the phone with my doctor. It's quite an important call. I will be back in two minutes. I'm so sorry. No problem, Julie. Okay. Just while we're waiting for Julie, Karen, I just thought I'd let you know, I did a, um, a reply all to one of Julie's messages and your, your Kojiko email thought I was uh, uh, spam and it wouldn't deliver. I, I've stopped using my Kojiko email because I was getting a lot of feedback that was happening as well. I've heard that from a couple people. I'm actually going to call them today and see if I can change my um, security. And if not, I'll have to switch. I've had this email for about 25 years, so it's kind of hard to switch, but I may have to. So thanks. And I've had the same thing. So um, this is Chris here. Uh -oh. I've had the same thing with Coach Co. So I switched to Gmail. It just got to be such a pain in the neck. I still have my Coach Co account. But for anything that I really want to receive, I use Gmail. Yeah, and I mean, I use Outlook. I still use everything from days old. So I'm going to have to switch yeah. everything. I'm not looking forward to it, but I'll, I, actually that's how my phone calls for after this class is to call. And if they can fix it, great. If not, I'll have to switch. I didn't hear it directly from Kojiko, but uh, another person said they heard Kojiko is having issues and it's not a quick fix. And this has been going on for a while. Yeah, it has. I'm getting a lot of complaints. And so I'm missing good, important emails. So yeah, thanks for the info. I'm going to call today and see what happens. Okay, so sorry about that. I have been waiting for a doctor's appointment for two weeks. And they finally called me just now and it's over. I think I may have broken a bone in my foot. So um, <laughs> I'm so sorry for interrupting our class, but um, I'm very glad I've managed to get an x-ray now. So, uh, <laughs> so I do apologize. Let's get back to it. Um, we are going to practice um, our tint tone and shade. So if you remember, what's the one where we add gray? Can anybody remember? Oh. Tone, well done. Three points to Leanne. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tone is when we add a little bit of black and white. So we're going to make a very small amount of black and white, so a light gray. Um, so we're just going to mix a little bit of black and white together. Um, so we're going to make a very light gray and then we are going to add our blue, the same blue that we used for our background. So we don't want it very gray, we only want it slightly gray. And on a value scale, the color that we're mixing is only going to be about, it looks dark on the camera for some reason, but it's actually quite light here. It's only about one or two shades darker than our background color. So the lighter it is, the, we want these rocks on the left to look like they're further away. So um, we want this to be fairly light. Oh, Julie, I don't see what you're mixing. Okay, sorry. I'm just okay. going to bring this over to the camera. Okay, so my palette, as you can see, has been work in progress for quite a while. Um, I've had my paints wet for three weeks now. Um, I do need to change this. Um, so I'm going to show you on a clean palette. because I think that one's going to be a little bit difficult to look at.
Okay, so I'm gonna get out my clean palette. So I've got some white. I'm gonna put some black out. And then I've got the blue that we used for the background. Here's my blue. Okay. So I'm going to start by making my gray. Just going to use a different brush for mixing. So I've got white and a small amount of black. Which brush are you using? I'm just using a small brush for mixing. Thank I'm you. gonna hold this up so you can see. So I'm just using any old brush for mixing because I, I don't want to have to clean my brush and then reapply it. So I'm just using a different brush for mixing. So I've made my gray. So it's quite a light gray. So remember when we did the gray scale? It'll be about a three on the gray scale. Then I'm adding my blue. Okay, and if we're not sure what it's going to look like, we can always put it on a little piece of paper and put it up against our canvas. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to grab a little piece of paper. Well, we call these tester strips. So you could get a little piece of paper. Paint the edge with the color you, you want to use, the color you've just mixed. And if you hold it up against the canvas, you can see what it's going to look like. And you can check if it's actually darker or different enough. So I, I'll often have these little pieces of paper ready when I'm painting. So you can hold it up against the canvas and see what it's going to look like. Excuse me. Um, did you say it was a four uh, yeah, in the value? Four. Yeah, a four on four. the value scale. Yeah. Thank you. And this is going to, it's just going to look like some distant rocks that are muted because they're set back. And obviously, we've got the water. Kind of in front of us and that will mute the rocks. I'm just going to put that there so hopefully you can still see my palette. Okay so we are going to start. So I am painting today on a slightly larger canvas. This is a 14 by 11. So um, proportionately if you think that that's kind of the middle of my canvas, I'm going um, just slightly above the middle. So um, on my canvas, it's about two or three fingers above the middle. So you just want to allow um, about a quarter at the top. So if you were to divide your canvas into four, it's about a quarter space at the top. And looking at the edge of the canvas, I'm about three fingers in. So again, scale that down if you're on a smaller canvas, if you're on an eight by 10, which a lot of people are, um, you wanna scale that down to about two fingers. So this is three fingers. Okay. So about three fingers across on mine and about a quarter of the way down. We're just going to put a little line and the line is going to be, if you're using your large brush, I'll switch to my large brush so you can see. Okay. 
it's about twice the length of my three quarter inch brush. Just like a little line there. And then if you find where the center of your canvas is, we're going to zigzag towards the center in a diagonal. So just zigzagging. And on the other side, we're going to go straight down just for a small bit. Go straight down. Then we're going to zigzag across. A little bit. Then we're going to kind of zigzag, but go straight down for about three fingers to about the center line again. So in line with here. You could go in and out a little bit. About there. So if you like to keep things simple, let's draw a line straight across and let's fill that in. Just to see what that looks like. You want to make sure you've got a little bit of a subtle color difference from the background. Julie, could you move the, the picture that you're painting more to the left? This one? This one? That one, the one you're painting, yeah. Off to the left? Yeah. Do you want me okay. to zoom in a little bit? I just wanted you to still be able to see yeah. this one. It's just that everybody's pictures right on top of your your painting. How oh. do I move that around? Um I, I should be on oh, it's okay. It's okay. I've done it now. <laughs> just click me on to speak of you. Okay. The top, um, you see in the top right hand corner, there's a little, there's yeah, the, there's the words view. Yeah. Well, if you click on that word view, it will say speaker or gallery. You want to click on to speaker. And if you click on to speaker, then it gets rid of everybody else and you only see me. Oh, right. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. No problem. All right. right. <laughs> that's okay yeah okay so has everybody done that so far just want to check up on everybody okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go across to just before halfway so we imagine our divide and invisible dividing line down the center of our canvas we're going to go across to just over halfway. Okay, so just over half, just to halfway. Okay. And then again, we're going to sort of zigzag down maybe about two finger spaces. We'll go across about one finger space. And then we'll zigzag up. Is this with the same shade? Same Sorry. shade. Thank you. Yeah, same shade, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then We'll go down a little bit and then we'll just go out a tiny bit and straight down. And then we're going to fill in the whole 
this whole area with the same color. So if you need to mix a little bit more, do so, but we're gonna fill in this whole area. And don't worry, you know, it doesn't have to be blended particularly well because we're gonna be putting other colors on top anyway. So let's fill in this whole area. I need to get a little bit more paint. If you have to mix more, here's a little tool. You know, we made our little tester strip or I made my little tester strip. This is this is why tester strips are really useful. Um, if you have to mix more paint from scratch, you can use your tester strip to check. So I can get my little tester strip, put the new paint that I've mixed extra and you can see it's darker. So I know I need to put more white to it. So I can put this next to it and I can see now I've got a fairly good match. Might be a little bit on the gray side. And then I can hold it up and go, yep, that's about the color that I want. So it's a bit like making yourself a, a value scale, but you're making it instantly to help you with just that one little area of the painting. I don't know where my mum went. Maybe they were having connection problems. I hope she's okay after the other week. How is everybody getting on with that first layer? Are we doing okay? Does anybody want takes takes time to keep um, mixing more pots and, and matching it. I know, I know. But that's okay. Are you using a, a wet palette? Um, no, I, I don't have that container. And I, I, sh I have to get out to a store, I guess, and get one. It is. Oh, you can just use anything you've got in the house with a lid, as long as it's airtight. You know, just a Tupperware container or... Yeah, I've seen I, I should, I should do that. Or, yeah. <laughs> anything with a lid, really. Um, you're Oakville, aren't you? Yes. If I did buy a few spare ones. If I, if I happen to be in Oakville at all, I'll, I'll drop one off to you. Oh, well, that's very kind. Thank you. I, I haven't been getting out. I just got my second uh, vaccine, so I'm still being careful. No, I don't blame you. So, um, yeah, I'll, I, I'm not, I don't have any plans to be in Oakville at the moment, but um, my husband's a coin collector and sometimes he goes to different towns to pick up coins. <laughs> so oh. if, if one of us happens to be in the area, we'll drop one. I've got, I've bought quite a few spares, so I'll drop one off to you. Oh, that's very kind. No worries. Or maybe we'll just go for a nice drive anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what I'll do is I'll see if, if, if uh, anybody else wants one. If there's a few of you, I'll just come and I'll take a little road trip and drop some off. Because they are so useful. And it's, yes. just a, it's just a sandwich box. It's just a, you know, you can just use a sandwich box as long as there's an, an airtight lid. And then you put a layer of paper towel um, and then um, just a piece of printer paper on top. And if you just spritz the paper towel, so it's a little bit damp. Um, honestly, like it, this is paint I put out. I mean, it's not looking the best, but this was probably four weeks ago. Wow. And my paint is still wet. Um, I, I guess it, it saves paint too. It really does save paint. Mom, you made um, a wet palette, didn't you? I did, but I've only just come back on. The internet's cut me off. I've got one That's here. Okay. Uh, I had to pause the class because I had to take a doctor's appointment that I've been waiting for for two weeks. So. Oh. 
So huge apologies, so, everybody. What do we do so far, Jill? Okay, so um, we we have you done your background? No, I've only wet it and then it cut off. Okay, so um, you want to do a blue and white background, quite light. The whole um, thing. The whole thing. So you okay. can use cobalt blue or ultramarine. I did a little bit of a combination of both. Yeah. Um, and then after you've done that, we're going to make a, a gray blue, a very light gray blue. Yeah. For this rock area. Okay. I'll, I'll get you caught off. I've recorded it as well. So I yeah. Okay, everybody. So we are going to let that dry before we add anything to it. But the next part, you'll really see how we can create distance just with um, using our tint tone and shade. So the next thing we're going to do is the same principle, but we're going to make this um, darker. So it's going to be a stronger gray. So on the value scale, we're looking at at least a six on the value scale of gray. Um, so let's make the gray first. And if you want to use a little bit of paper as a tester strip, you can kind of see the, the difference. So do you remember I made this one when I was trying to make more blue and this one went quite dark? It's kind of, that's the kind of color I'm aiming for, even a little bit darker. So about a six on the value scale of a toned blue. So toned is adding gray to our base color. So I've got my blue. I'm going to make my gray. So I'm going to be a bit more generous with the black this time. Make my gray. So I want my gray. And you can even refer to, if you have your value scales handy that you painted, you could get your value scale out and look for what a number six looks like on your value scale. Remember those gray value scales that we made? So make the gray about a number six and then we're going to add our blue. So it's a gray blue. So I'll wait till everybody's got the color ready before we reapply it. So find your center line on your canvas. So this is kind of my center line. This time we're only going to do about one finger space in. So maybe slightly more if you're on a larger canvas like me, but if you're on an eight by 10, you only need to be one finger space in. So find the center line, one finger space in if you're on a small canvas, extend it a little bit if you're like me and you're on an 11 by 40, uh, 11 by 14, yeah. Okay. So about one finger space in on the center line, we're just gonna put a line about as wide as our brush with this darker, blue. So this is our gray blue. And if you and want, if you want let's, let's oh I've got a bit of an echo. I'm just gonna mute. I don't know why. Okay, just had a little bit of feedback. I'm just gonna take this all the way down. I'm gonna make myself a little tower. This will just help me as a guide. And I just wanted you to see the color difference. You see how this color, because it's stronger, sends this back. Yeah. Okay. If you need to add a little bit of water to your paint, you can do. Okay. So um, from that center line, I'm just gonna do a, a sweep sideways. Let's fill that in. So 
So it's still blue, but it's a gray blue. Tell me if I'm going too fast. Is everybody okay with the speed? Okay, and we're going to do kind of like a step. Um, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a guide so I know how far to come down. So can you see this part here that we made? I'm going to put two fingers there and I'm going to put a little line across. This is a guide. So this is the same color. Uh, what value did you say again? I'm just catching up here. That's okay. So um, it's about a number six on our gray six. scale. Oh, and pretty we dark. Blue, and we added okay. blue to it. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Okay, thank you. No worries. So just to recap, um, we're looking at this kind of little mound here. Two finger spaces. I made a line across. And then this is going to be a nice little guide for me. So um, now I'm going to step down from here. So remember this tower that we made? I'm just going to kind of go a little bit of a stepping stone down. Doesn't matter how many steps you make. I'm still going to do a little bit of that side to side. And let's sweep this about there. And I'm going to fill it in. I mean, these shapes don't have to look like mine if you want to be creative and do something different. I love it when people do different things. So it can be different. I'm just painting my sides while I'm at it. And this, this new rock formation is going to be in front. So we're going to go a little bit over the one that we already made, the lighter one. Okay, so when we get to that edge that we just made, we're going to go down a little bit, a little bit of a curve. And we're going to go down some more, maybe about two finger spaces, down some more. And then I'm going to make my way across. So I'm going to go down across a little bit more. You can afford to go a bit darker here. So if you are running out of paint, you could add a little bit, you could make it a bit darker by adding some black to it. More blue and black. So it can be darker at the bottom. Okay, so I've gone down here. Now I'm gonna sweep across to about a third of the way from the edge. And I'm gonna fill all this in. So this is quite a large part of the painting. The rest of it, we're gonna have lots of fun with color. It's gonna be far more interesting. We're gonna move away from our sludgy blues and we're gonna start creating some pretty coral and some pretty fish. So can you see the contrast now of the bright blue water and then the, the gray kind of rock formation in the distance? See how by, by using our tin tone and
Julie, my thing is frozen. My computer. I think her connection might have gone out. She'll probably be back soon. Oh, okay, great. I just, uh, my daughter is in California. She just called me. And so as soon as I left my phone hung up from her, everything went. So I figured, ah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, no problem. Like I said, she should be back soon. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Work on this. Can everybody hear me? Ah, uh, yes, I think we can hear you. Okay, um, our internet is completely down, so I'm hot spotting from my phone using my cellular. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Um, Ken's Ken's looking at why it's gone down. He's gonna phone um, Kojiko. So that's interesting. So I'm hot spotting from my phone, so it may be a little bit jumpy, but we'll carry on um country living for you right so we are going to make a little baby shark or baby fish however you want to interpret this guy shark or a fish i'm going to leave that up to you but we're going to do this distant little fish here so i would say use a round a smallish round so that's the pointy one that one. And I am going to zoom in for this um, so you can see what I'm doing. But at, at any point, I can zoom back out and show you the, um, the full painting. So I'm going to zoom in. OK, is that lined up OK? I'm just going to focus it. Yeah. Everybody see that all right? Okay, so I'm just going to show you this little guy. So it's just creating the feeling of distant. We're going to put some distant kind of coral in the background and this distant fish. So we're going to use um, the same color we used for this. So um, our about number three or four tone tinted toned blue. Thank goodness for hotspot phones, hey? Okay. I'm going to try and color match that I think that's close enough yeah okay right let's do our little fishy so um to keep things simple i'm gonna start with oh i can't see that very well i'm 
I'm going to do my curve line. So I'm going to make a little curve triangle. Fill that in. Okay, and then let's kind of curve this round and give it a little bit of a tail. Curve it around this way. If you want to make it a shark, give it a big upper fin. If you want to make it a fish, give it a small fin. <laughs> oh, internet's back. Thank you. See if I can switch over now. Did you add blue to this or is it the same color as the first rock? I think that while she's switching back to her internet, she may be unable to hear you for a little bit. Was it the same color? Do you remember? Uh, I think it's the same color as the first rock that you did. Yeah, okay, good, thank you. No problem. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, we can hear okay. you. Sorry, I'm having very bad internet problems today. Okay. So if anybody wants to share where they're up to, I'd love to see where you're up to right now. Anybody wanna show and share? Oh, very nice. Well done, Kathy. Looks awesome. Big thumbs up. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do the reeds with the same color. Very, very easy. Start from the bottom. And then let's just do a wavy line. And we're just going to do a few wavy lines. Gisela, am I breaking up or am I clear? You're clear. Okay, excellent. It's breaking up my end, but as long as I'm clear, your end. Okay. So we're going to do some wavy lines.
So we are going to do a few clusters of these for our muted background. So let's do, say, three clusters to start with. We can always do some more. Might make these ones a bit smaller so they look further away. Is this using the color of the dark rock, Julie? Uh, the color of the rock, that's it. Or the one that's furthest away. The same color as the fish in this rock. Have you? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, please feel free to ask me any questions if I if I miss miss anything out. So just some little wiggly lines. I've done all little clusters here. And we can put some slightly darker ones on the other side. So if we go to this one that's in the foreground, let's make this slightly darker. Mom, did you get caught up okay? Oh, you're muted, you're muted. You're muted. You, <laughs> needs my dad to unmute. <laughs> How are we doing with that? You doing okay? Franca, how are you getting on? Am I unmuted now? You're unmuted now. You said, Mom, how's it going? I'm struggling a bit because we've had such trouble with our internet, you know. But it's all right we now. My trouble today as well. I keep having to switch over to my phone. Don't know what's going on. I've had to switch over to my phone today. Uh, but I'm doing my best and you've recorded it, haven't you? I've recorded it. And you know what? Um, Gisela and I will make an awesome video for you. We'll, we'll add some oh, extra commentary, won't we? We'll work on that today. That would be really nice. I've got my expert on, on the case. <laughs> I'd be so happy. <laughs> my, my, my video animation expert. <laughs> and, no, and no commercials inserted. Yes. Oh, well, I, did do. I could add some commercials. <laughs> no. <laughs> OK. Um, we are going to start adding a little bit of greenery to our painting. And we're going to start on the, the foreground first. And um, can you see on my original painting that I have these kind of like little kind of mossy areas, algae, these kind of quite bright green areas, these quite bright green patches. 
So we're going to be adding some greenery and then we're going to be putting a few highlights to create some rock shapes. But let's kind of establish where our, our greenery is going to go first. So um, I feel like this painting needs some color. So it, as long as your painting is dry, we are going to get some green. So we're going to mix our blue with our yellow and we're going to make a nice bright green. So this is why it's important to have clean water because um, muddy water equals a muddy painting. That's why I always have two, two cups of water on the go. So I've always got a clean one handy. Okay, so we're gonna use yellow and blue. So we're gonna get out some, I might get a clean piece of mixing paper actually. Okay, so yellow and whatever blue you used for your background. We're gonna go really bright now. So in contrast to what we've been painting, it might seem to be a little bit too bright, but uh, I'm gonna go for it. I would say have some white handy too. We may need to add a bit of white to our green. So let's get some, let's make a green to start with. So we're gonna use a lot of yellow because remember when we did our color wheel, yellow is a weak color and all the rest are quite strong. So we're gonna use quite a bit of yellow and just a tiny bit of blue. So let's put a little bit of blue to this. I always got a little bit tentative with it because we can always go, we can always add more later. Sorry, somebody asked me something. Uh, Julie, is that a mini wet pill that you're working on today? It is. It's just because this one is, it's, I don't want to throw this paint away, but it's a little bit hard for you to see what I've got. So I'm using a small one just for demonstration purposes, but this one I actually got from um, Dollarama. It's a, it's a pretty good little mini one, but I often use just Tupperware containers as long as it's airtight with a lid. So I'm making my green. So just a little bit of blue in. I might add a little bit of white to this, just a tiny bit. And don't worry, we're all, we're all using different paints, so our greens will look different. Got a little happy accident here. I got a little bit of a water smudge. I'll just fix that up. I have to put a fish or something in front of that. Okay, so we've got our green. Check our canvas is dry-ish. Let's go our green and we are going to create our first shape and I'm going to dab into the corner of my canvas. And create a little, little bit of algae or moss. I'm gonna zoom in for this, hold on. A little bit on the dark side, but I'm gonna add some white to it. Uh, excuse me, what tone are we, is the green? Gonna be really I bright. mean, what shade? On the value scale, it's gonna yeah, be value. 
quite bright. So I'll show you that. So we're going to do an underpainting first, and then we're going to lighten it with some white. So you want to go okay. quite bright. So maybe like a three. OK, thank you. Paint's a little bit wet from underneath, so this first layer won't show up that well. So let's establish where all the shapes are going to go, and then we can highlight them later. Question, Julie, yep. what, you just, ju what you just did, you applied a dark green and now you're putting a lighter green. Did you do those two layers to give depth or just because you were the dark was too dark? Get a quick blast with the hairdryer. Because we're doing light on dark, we may need a couple of layers for this. So I'm dabbing, I'm not kind of brushing it on. So let's establish where all this green's going to go before we start adding any highlights for depth. So let's um, look at kind of, you see where there's like a little corner area here where, um, you know, it steps up. I'm going to use these little corner areas to put a little bit of my algae on. So I'll put a little bit there. And then maybe a little bit here. Oh. No. Let's put, I always try and group in three. So let's put another one here. Again, if it's not terribly bright, bright right now, because the paint's still a little bit wet, don't, don't worry about it. We'll add another layer later. So I'm imagining that, you know, this is a three dimensional rock that has shelves for the algae or the corals to grow on. Let's put another one kind of here. We'll put them anywhere you like, anywhere that feels like it, it works on your individual painting. See how I'm creating shelves and layers? Let's put one more uh, here. So I'm just dabbing. And we're going to do the same on the, the lighter one that's in the background and come back to this when it's dry. So on this side, they're going to be more muted. So we're going to apply that Tintonin shade aspect that we did before. So we want the green to be more muted. So I may add a little bit of gray. I'm going to see what it looks like with just white. I may add a little bit of gray to it. So I'm going to just move some of that green across to a new mixing area. 
and add some some white to it. I feel like this is going to be too bright. I think I'm going to add a little bit of grey, just a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit. That's better. So I want this to be a similar value. To the background would not to complicate it but just a question for future reference would adding the complement also mute it absolutely i just didn't want to i didn't want to kind of throw that at you at this stage but absolutely if you're confident with that go for it so the complement to the green would be a red but i thought just just to keep things simple we'll do gray for now but you're absolutely right so let's do the same thing on this this background. Let's um let's put a little bit of this might be too bright. Yeah, that's too bright. See how bright that is? I think it needs to be a little bit grayer. That's it's it's amazing how you don't really know till you apply it. You can even add a bit of blue to it, a bit more blue to tone it down, right? There we go. That's better. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add some little bits of moss or algae, whatever this green stuff is. <laughs> what would you call it? Algae, green coral? I think it is algae. Yeah. Green stuff. Okay. I'm going to put a fair bit of it down here where our two layers are overlapping. Uh, we're still working with um, a, a value of four. So for the background, we're, we're trying to make a green algae that that is the same value as the background color for this rock. So yeah, so this rock was a four. So we want about a four there. And then here, our rock, we're going actually brighter because this is closer to us. So we're kind of doing a different thing on this side. Thank you. So while this dries, we are going to paint in our focal point, which is our angelfish. This guy. So we may as well use the drying time that we need to put in our and just about did it. Let's see, I'm not to back up a little bit. There we go. Right. Okay. Can you see my angelfish and the blank canvas? You need yes, very, can. yeah, excellent. You need very clean water for this. You'll need, um, so you might need to change your water depending on what it's like. Um, and um, white paint to start with. Now we're actually going to utilize some of that gray mixture, the gray blue mixture we may have left from doing um, our rocks. And we're going to use that for our 
shadow. If you don't have it, we can make a little bit more. What number brush are you using? I'm using a fairly small one. Um, this is a number three or four round. Okay. So just for comparison, you see in relation to my, my little finger. Yeah. Quite a small one, yeah, about a number three. Okay, so we're gonna use pure white. Um, when we're doing detail like this, you don't want to overload your brush. I would say no more than about a third to a half along the bristles with your paint, just so you've got control and you wanna dampen your brush and then smooth out the bristles before you apply the paint. Okay, so um, positioning wise, I'm gonna slightly overlap some of these little reed things. Um, my fish is about uh, three, just over maybe three and a half finger spaces long if I put my finger spaces together and about two fingers deep. And it is at an angle. So um, kind of that's about the angle if I put my finger there, that's the, about the angle that we're aiming for. So um, if you think three, three to three and a half fingers wide, I'm gonna place my fish about here. So kind of in line with this as a guy that we drew. Um, and I'm gonna start by doing a little, little triangle. Triangle. And I'm going to go up and around. And just kind of, if you put your finger there, you can kind of use your finger as a guide for the shape. I'm gonna go back down to about the, kind of almost gonna draw around my finger. And there's the tail fin. Can you use any special markers? Cause I can't find them on my own. Yeah. Okay, so once we've done this bit, we're going to continue around. Let's do our second fin. Would be a smaller one, more of a triangle. Watch my team. Julie. Hey. Julie. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to come out of it uh, at the moment. Uh, Jean's got to go and see uh, a friend of hers whose husband's just died. Oh no. Okay. okay. So I'll I'll get back to you. Are we pausing it? Yeah, excellent. She'll get back to you later on today. Okay, no problem. Okay, thanks, Jules. Lots of love. Okay. Bye. 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 -bye. Okay, so now we're going to do the um, a little bit of a curve with the tail. a slight curve, quite straight. And then we're going to go back to where the, the front of the fish is. And we're going to join up to there. And then we'll add our bottom fin.
And for now we can fill all of this in. So let's just kind of fill in the whole thing with our white. Just to create a little bit of an underpaint of rockfish. How's everybody's fish shape coming along? Bob, how you doing? Um, oh, I'm not you? No, much coming on. It's just like a blob at the moment. Oh, I'm sorry, it's fine. <laughs> it's not sort of as sharp as yours. My paint seems to. Well, do you remember the, the color that we used for um, this background rock? We're going to yeah. use the shadow of the fish. So we're just going to use a, a bluey gray, quite light. So we're only about a number three or four for the shadow under the fish. So let's kind of just tint this. It'll make quite a difference to the shape for you. And we're going to go about halfway up with that shadow color. Hang on, I'm going to change my exposure. Can you see the shadow that I just put on? Yeah. So I've just almost gone straight across halfway up. And we'll transition from the gray to the white. So we'll just blend it. There you go, our fish is taking shape. Once you put the eye in, it will start looking like a fish. Mm -hmm. I have a trick to that. Depending on how steady your hand is, you can either use the wrong end of your paintbrush or you can use the tip of your paintbrush. Um, and we're going to use pure black. Tiny, 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 tiny amount. I'm going to put a little blob of black underneath on the end of the nose. And then a little blob of black where my eye is going to go. And then we're going to do the stripes. So you, you might need to give the, I'm going to give this a quick hair dry because I do want the stripes to stand out. So one second. Okay, Are you still with me? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. The fish okay. isn't though, the fish is doing its own thing. The fish is, right. You know what, the stripes really give it shape. So um, okay. we'll start just where, just a little bit beside where we put the eye, not all the way to the top. 
And we're just gonna curve around. And the curve is gonna go right to the end of that fin that we made. So a curve line. And it's going to divide into two curves. So it's going to split like that. I'm going to do two of those. The second one's going to start just before the second fin at the top. Starting to look like a fish. And then we're going to put a tiny back line on the tail. Julie. Hi. Hi. Um, is there, um, if you're more comfortable putting in your background and putting more detail in the background before doing the fish, would that be okay too? Yeah, totally. It's your painting, whichever way you want to put it together. I'm always worried I'd miss, mess something up on the background and then want to be redoing things and then yeah. the fish is in the way. I get it, absolutely. Now you can make your angel fish with some yellow highlights or some orange. So, um, you know, have some fun with it, whatever color you would like yours to be. Um, I don't know whether I want to do orange or yellow. I feel like orange would be kind of cool. Um, I'm going to stick to the original, do yellow just for this. So I'm going to take some bright yellow and I'm going to apply it just in a few areas. So I'm going to put it on the top middle fin, some bright yellow. I'm going to put it on the tail. Um, I'm gonna put it underneath. So just in a few little areas. I don't want to color the whole thing yellow. My black's run into the, the other black. <laughs> uh, I, thought I went through the black like a train. I think my problem was that the sea is quite light. So right. the, the, uh, it's not as dark as your blue. Right. So when I put the white on, it's not showing up as it should do. Uh. How is everybody else getting on with that? Somebody talk to me. <laughs> Leanne, I'm going to pick on you. How are you getting on? <laughs> oh, I'm slowly coming along. I have to go back and fix up my fish and my shark, but that's okay. I'm, I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> I keep thinking of finding Nemo, you know, the... <laughs> <laughs> just keep swimming just keep swimming <laughs> just keep aerial swimming. too <laughs> yeah yeah Would everybody be okay if we went over a little bit so I could give you back the time 
we lost at the beginning. Is that okay? Yeah, fine. It's okay yeah. with me. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Right. Whilst we have our white out, we're gonna add a, can you see the light coming from the top, creating our light source at the top? Yeah. A little bit. We're just gonna, while we got the white out, we may as well use it. Okay. So I'm gonna do a, a combination of, of strokes. Um, I'm going to use my large brush and I'm going to vary the stroke. So I'm using the flat and the edge. So I'm going to start with the flat and I'm going to sweep. And this is a glaze. So it's watered down white paint. And I am being very gentle with my strokes. So can you see how I'm like almost not touching the canvas and I'm going right across the top of my painting over everything. So this is with the flat part to start with. So you don't want to use saturated white, um, watered down white and a very gentle stroke. And I'm pulling in the same direction. If we own a transparent white, should we use that? What's that? Sorry? If we own a, a transparent white, I have a tube of zinc white. Oh, would go that, for it. Yeah. Would, would that be a better choice? Well, I'm just using regular titanium, just watered down. So what, but if you want to try it, go, go ahead and, and try it. Yeah. It shouldn't really make much of a, a difference, to be honest. That's why I don't really, I have bought zinc white once before, but I find it so easy just to make your own, you know, um, but, but I do own some. So if you have it, use it. I try to just recommend people just um, buy as little as you need to, because we can make most most of the things we need. But if you already have it, it's it's kind of fun playing with with new paints. I like your approach. <laughs> I'm always just trying to save as much money as we can and just buy only what we need, because then then it goes further. Um, I always say to people, don't buy these kits that have every color of the rainbow because we can make every color of the rainbow. Although sometimes if you see a really lovely color, like I, I do buy turquoise out of the tube because it's just a lot brighter and more vibrant than the turquoise I can make. So there are some colors that I buy you know, sometimes I buy if I'm if I'm doing one of my really bright paintings, I'll buy a really bright, bright green or a really bright orange just to you know get that kind of excitement in the painting. So can you see how by adding the fish and by adding the light source, we've now got a real contrast in our painting? And this is where we're going to start adding a few highlights to our rocks based on where our light is coming through, our sun is coming through the water. I don't want to race ahead. So if everybody just lets me know when they've done those highlights, give me maybe a thumbs up so I know you've done them. Yeah, okay, excellent. <laughs> I can't wait to do our share and share today.
So Gisela, how many, um, is this your, how many, how many years do you have left? That's cool. uh, for high school. I yeah. have, well, I'm going into grade 11 next year. So I have two years left. Fighting time. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to take an almost white. We're just going to gray it down a little bit so it's not as bright as our light source. So almost white, maybe a one or two on the value scale. And we're going to add a few highlights, first of all, on the top of our background rock. So let's kind of just put in a few little bits of white. And we need to put the light where it would be catching. So we don't want to, actually that might be a bit too light. Let's go to a number two. We're just on the edges here. And this is how we're gonna make the rocks look a little bit more three-dimensional. So I'm gonna put in just a few lines. So I'm kind of just zigzagging my way down. mainly focusing on the top. Put some on the other side. Now I'm actually gonna use the same shade on the other side for my highlights because I want to really add some brightness with color in a minute with my corals. I think this is a really fun painting. I, I, I hope you're enjoying it. It's, um, this kind of loves the feel of an aquarium or an aquarium or the sea, <laughs> wherever you would like your fish to be swimming. I remember back in the 1990s when we were fortunate enough to be amongst the first to get desktop computing at work and at home from Matt. Right. The aquarium screensaver. I love that screensaver. Oh, yeah. I did add a few um, little distant fish behind this guy too. I think it's a restful painting water. So we're going to touch up that green coral that we worked on earlier, and then we're going to go to our reds. It's going to be really fun. So you know those little wiggly things we put in, the little kind of grassy things? Let's put some very light green or or you can just use pure yellow if you want let's put a few of those wiggles here coming out of our i might just use yellow because with the blue background it's going to look a bit greeny anyway let me put some wiggles here I think you're going to be pretty proud of what you've made today.
Okay, so I'm going to put about three, uh, do an odd number, three or five of those little, little wiggles. And then I'm going to mix yellow with white, just yellow and white. So I'm mixing yellow and white. And I'm, I am going to put some highlights on my green. I will blend them in. Just going to establish where we're going to go first. So I'm just kind of alternating a bit of yellow and white here, just along the, the tops. A little bit more yellow. And then in a minute, I'm going to get out my red. If you have a lizard in red, then you may find that a, a nicer, a brighter red because it's a bit on the cool side. But otherwise, cadmium red would be fine too. And hopefully you'll see that the more we add to that right hand side, how it sends that other rock formation backwards. Could you say that again, please? Somebody say something? Could you just repeat what you said uh, again about sending back? About sending back? Yeah. So the brighter we make the foreground, it allows that middle ground to kind of create some distance. It, can, it sends it backwards the brighter we make the foreground. Thank you. I missed the, the word brighter. All right. And then, you know, we were talking about a while ago about um, how we're training our viewers eye to travel around the painting. So so because we've now got our focal point, we, we're basically creating a, a travel travel point through the painting. The bottom right hand corner, then we're reaching um, our main focal point, our angel fish, then we're kind of going to this fish in the background and then we're going to our light source. So we're, we're directing the viewer on a journey through the painting. Okay, so we're going to work on our crimson or a lizard red. And we're going to go bold. I'm going 
going to use a round, but um, I'm going to use a slightly bigger round than the one I did before. And I'm going to create uh, just some coral. Just kind of tubular coral. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but um, let's draw some curved red lines. Sorry, Julie, did you say you mixed your red with something else? No, nope, just pure red out of the tube, just, just pure crimson. Just pure red. Okay. Yeah. Pure crimson. And I put some down here too. I'm going to put this one quite large because it's sort of in the foreground. I like to group things in threes, so let's put a little bit more red kind of in the background. Let's do some fives. And really, you can put, you know, kind of come up with some interesting coral shapes if you want to add in whatever you like. If you've been lucky enough to see coral, kind of remember some of the shapes that were your favorites. You know, we can have purples, pinks, those kind of flat ones. I might put in some kind of purpley ones. Just while I let those red ones dry, I'm going to put a few highlights and things on those red ones, but I'm just going to let them dry for a minute. Just uh, mixing a little bit of purple here. So have some fun with it, you know, invent whatever kind of corals you want to put in your painting. 
the, the last group I did this with got very creative with some sea monsters and all sorts of things going on. I was thinking mermaid. Yeah, yeah, we did have a mermaid in one of them. Yeah, that would be fun. Have some fun with it. Oh, I've just found a picture of that coral, the red with the tubes. I remember the first time I ever went snorkeling and actually saw these amazing colors and I just couldn't believe my eyes that this was like real, you know. <laughs> So I'm just putting a bit of purple in. I'm dabbing it for now. I will put a little bit of detail in in a minute. Just dabbing it in for now. I tried to do one of those brain corals in this paint and I'm not quite sure if I pulled it off. <laughs> so I might, I might leave it out this time. It didn't quite work. So I didn't have a picture to go on at the time. Oh, I know. There's those ones that kind of are semi-transparent and they have all those uh, interesting sort of feather-like qualities. They, they kind of do add a little bit of weight to that. This is where we can just be a little bit playful. I think you can kind of just make any, you know, make up any shapes you like, because I think there's such a wondrous variety.
Okay, so I'm hoping my little red thing's drying. I'm going to try and put some little tubular ends to them. everybody doing? Have you had any oh no moments today or? I haven't had any oh no moments. Yeah, my fish. <laughs> I'm going to leave it till after and attack it again. <laughs> right. It's my white fish. So the last thing I wanted to do was add a little bit of depth to our paintings by putting in a few darks. And I'm going to be quite sparing with this. So um, I'm going to mix a blue with a fair amount of black in it, a very dark gray. And I'm, I'm going to be a little bit choosy where I put it, but I just, it's going to be mainly in the foreground. So this is just going to provide a little bit of contrast, contrast and depth.
I'm just putting a little bit of this dark in. Right, I'm going to stop in a minute and take any questions. And we'll have a little share and share. How is everybody getting along? Um, who wants to reveal? Oh, I found a picture of brain coral. I'm going to share it. There we go. Can everybody see my screen? Mm -hmm. With the brain coral? That's why I was trying to. Oh, it wasn't too far off. There's some nice pictures of coral for inspiration. Lots of different types and colors. These are kind of interesting, the ones that look like broccoli, like <laughs> pink broccoli. Yeah. And these are like the deer antlers. Um, and then this orange kind of feathery type. But I mean, the colors are just so wondrous. I mean, look at that. The colors it's on the right are lovely, aren't they? Just stunning, yeah. So, you know, you could keep adding to this. This was the tubular coral that, because um, the, ne the Nemo, um, yeah, the little Nemo fish, the little orange angelfish really like it. Okay, so 
Nemo's a clownfish. Clownfish, sorry. It's getting the fish mixed up. I know that thanks to Disney. Oh, I love that movie. I love Dory, the little, uh, you know, the little Dory fish, whatever she was called. Okay, so I'm going to close this down. And then we'll do our little, little sharing. So Gisela, we always do like a little show and share at the end. See how everybody's done. Okay, that sounds cool. I'm gonna switch cameras. Hi everybody. <laughs> and let's see how everybody did.